Welcome to the After The Show Movie Podcast, brought to you by your hosts, Ace Scully and Sid Top. We're addicted to movies. Are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, Sid Talk. How are you? Hello. Looking forward to this podcast. It's my favorite podcast of the week. Mm. You, know, mm. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's a bit, you know. I'm not tooting my own bell. Hmm. That's what I would say, tooting your own bell. Yes. I'm not That's doing all that. right. No. So what's the before the after the show uh, discussion? What were we talking about? Uh, you were complaining about my voice being quiet on your little recording, and I was playing The Sims. I wasn't complaining. <laughs> you thought I was complaining. Mm-hmm. You misstrewed what I said. Mm. You were tooting your own oh, sorry, bell. Oh, you were directing me. Correct. <laughs> like, to me? I'm the director of after the show. <laughs> Yes. And I'm the perpetual guest. You're the talent. True. That's my <laughs> tooting my own horn. Yes. Yes. All right. Other than that, it was not, it was pretty uneventful. It was. A discussion about the weather. You made some tea. You ate some, you ate a sandwich made out of cheese and bread. I did, but that was a long time ago. This is the high life of podcasting, kids. <laughs> All right. It is Friday. March the 21st. This is after the show number 831. We look at a new movie every week, and this week we look at the movie Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. It's a 2023 release out now on Blu ray, 4K, and streaming. Rated PG 13. It's from our friends at Warner Brothers, who sent us a copy of the 4K disc for review. Sid Talk, what is the synopsis of Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom? Well, first of all, I have to correct you. It's not Friday. The 21st. It's the 22nd. It is. Just what so you know. what just am so I doing? Just so you don't confuse everyone. All right. <laughs> it was like, what year is it that the 23rd? What yeah. year is this? It is the 22nd of March of 2024. And the synopsis is Aquaman finds a lost kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm not going to overthink this one. Let me give you the one off the box. From this point forward, just know that I'm not overthinking this movie. Okay, here's the one off the box. Black Manta. Black Manta? Is that what he was called? Okay. I thought he was praying Mantis, but maybe. Yes. Black Manta seeks revenge on Aquaman for his father's death. Wielding the Black Trident's power, he becomes a formidable foe. To defend Atlantis, Aquaman forges an alliance with his imprisoned brother. They must protect the kingdom. Is it my imagination or is this avenging a dead father really boring? I'm going to start there. Well, let's start. Let me <laughs> you say. Make, you make your big baddie still pissed off. I mean, I'd be pissed off too. I'm just saying, though, as a story, it's like Snoozeville, right? Yeah, let me start by saying <laughs> this is the uh, final movie in the DC universe that was created. We've got all the movies on our shelf. We counted them. There are 18 movies. Mm -hmm. We've seen all 18, including the first Aquaman movie. This is a sequel to that. Let me start by saying, I thought this movie was very boring. I'm not going to disagree, <laughs> sadly. I mean, it's fun. And I was a fan of the first Aquaman movie, which I, I think is like, much better. Yeah, and I love the whole lost world of Atlantis and underwater stuff. I like space and underwater, you know, anything that goes there. So I'm in for a good time. I don't have a problem with the fun factor. No. Uh, it's just that the other most part of my brain that sees all the flaws. <laughs> and there and are like, flaws all over the place. Yeah, in this and movie. my brain just can't. Yes, I love having fun with superhero stuff or adventure, any of that. It's just that I want a really good story. If you're going to give me fantastic and over the top and the kind of weird yucky humor like i call it yucky like it's just yeehaw humor i don't know i don't know it's just uh, if you're I gonna call do it stupid humor if you're gonna do all that then give me like a really interesting story to balance it out and that was a problem the problem i had with the movie is the visuals sometimes they were good 
sometimes they were bad. It yeah, was there very were mo- strange. There were moments of like, oh, that looks really good. There were and moments then- where I was like, that's one of the most impressive things I've ever seen. And then the next shot was like, like a rubber doll running, running around, yes. you know? Yes. So I hated all that. And the other thing I didn't like was the term that came to my mind while I was watching it. There were moments during the battles where it looked like visual diarrhea. My. Do you get what I'm saying? It was just like, I don't even know what I'm looking at right now. It's a lot of things blowing up and water everywhere. It's really incoherent to look at. Yeah, it's very muddy. Yeah. A lot of it, sadly. And if you and I are sitting there focused on that, then you know it's not. We're watching the 4K disc on a big projector. It's not like we're, not, we, we're looking at a phone. We should be able to see everything perfectly, right? I actually thought if you were watching this movie on a phone, (laughs) it would look fine. And I'm not saying I'm a big advocate of that, but if that's the way the world is and some people want to digest their entertainment while they're riding a train to work or whatever, and they happen to be watching a movie, so be it, right? That's fine. But I don't want that to become the standard. (laughs) Yeah. And the other thing, the other problem I had was the first Aquaman movie had a different tone to this movie. This movie... It had a serious story going on, this movie, and then it just descended into stupid jokes and, like, goofing around. I'm going to tell you something. I don't remember the first movie at all. Not, know, but, even, not even the, the Mantis guy. I mean, I do. I don't remember any of it except Aquaman being drunk. Yes, in a bar. That's No, no, that's not even that movie. That is Justice League. Oh. It's a different movie. Okay, so give me a recap of the first Aquaman. Did he know he was Aquaman? Yes. In the first movie? Yeah. It's not an origin story? Um, I think there might have been an origin story in the first two minutes of the movie. Like, here he is as a baby, here he is living in Atlantis. No, I meant origin story as in the whole first, the movie is him. See, we're talking about that movie instead of this one. But um, the whole movie is him finding out. Like, wasn't he just a dude? Mm, no okay then see i don't recall i don't even remember the first one so everything else is a little bit they uh. had him as a baby and then they put him in that lighthouse i seem to remember as a baby and made uh, boba fett look after him no he's his dad yes. and he raised him but did and Aquaman then, know? when he grew up they came back from under the sea to take him back Right, but he didn't know he was what he is i guess arthur did not until that, t- that yeah point. that's what i'm saying so that right. movie was about that Yes. But I didn't remember any of that. So all, every reference in this movie to the other movie, even him having a brother, I don't remember any see, of that. I, see, I remember all that because it was the final boss fight in the first movie, him fighting his brother in a mm. video gamey way. And it was really shitty. It was on like a, like a, I don't even know what it was. It was verbal. It was visual diarrhea. It was <laughs> a, a, a circle in the middle of the sea and they were both fighting on it. You know, it rose up out of the sea, especially for them to fight on. It might have been a submarine. Who knows? It was something. But yeah, I remember that movie. I remember it not having such a goofy tone as this movie, though. This movie kind of like started off serious and then decided it was going to be stupid. I feel like it started off stupid (laughs) right from the beginning. Oh, it did start off stupid. Yeah. Yes, it did. Because the beginning action scene was him talking to his baby. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. There was no seriousness. I wasn't sure where you were coming from in that because there was nothing of substance in this. So movie. it's like DC, this DC universe. They don't know what their tone is because they start with something like Man of Steel, which is a very serious take on Superman, and then they end with like a Guardians of the Galaxy style goofbally thing, right? But not, but not quite as good as that. Yeah, it's like they don't understand like where they're at. Too many different cooks in the kitchen, maybe. Stay in your lane. Whatever works, do that. Don't copy what the other people are doing or decide that you have to change it up. Because I think Man of Steel was like the best thing they did. It was downhill from there, right? Um, I mean, you think that. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I did think Man of Steel. I didn't have that much fondness for Man of Steel either, but I mean, it was fine. It's one of my favorite tellings of the Superman story. I know. Yeah. I thought it was, the tone was right. It wasn't stupid, it was serious, and it was Superman's origin story. This here with Aquaman, you even turned to me at one point in the movie and said, do you know anything about Aquaman? And I'm like, not really, just that first movie. And that's when I realized that you didn't remember the first movie. Yeah, no, I I was on the verge of being like, we need to pause and you need to tell me. 
the history of Aquaman. <laughs> what happened in the movie that I Who saw? Who is Aquaman? <laughs> What's a Nubian? Oh my God. You've been on that kick lately. What's a Nubian? <laughs> only, <laughs> only film people will know what that is. Well, yeah. Star uh, Wars people. And maybe stoners. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It was confused. It wasn't confusing the plot. The plot's real simple in this movie. It was more just like, what's the point? Like, and I said at the end, sadly, I mean, we're saying, we're saying really terrible things. And the truth is it was still like, I still like settled in with my popcorn and my blanket and was like, okay. I mean, it's a romp, right? Yeah. And everybody's fine. Nobody's like exceptionally interesting or funny or like, oh, I need to keep my eyes on that person. But it was like a nice afternoon movie. So I don't I can't complain about the experience. I had a roller coaster with it. I was like, (laughs) this is kind of fun. I like how it looks. Oh, my God. I'm almost switched off for a while. And then, oh, this is cool. I really like it. Oh, and then I was like, oh, this is copying off other things. Like, and I can feel that. Oh, it you is. mentioned that quite often. Yeah. Yeah. I can actually feel that this guy, James Wan, he liked that bit in The Matrix and he liked that bit in Lord of the Rings and he liked, and I can see this stuff. So that starts putting me off this story because then I'm going, hmm, Lord of the Rings was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Well, I'll just stop this and watch that again. Yeah. And The Matrix, <laughs> I love those ships in The Matrix that you seem to be copying here. Like, there was a lot of that going on. And then towards the end, it picked up a little bit for me. And then it felt like a set from Star Trek at one point. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. I was like, oh, wow, this, these all look like fake rocks. <laughs> and it looks like a, a set from a 1960s sci fi TV show. Yep. Yeah. And then the next, on the other hand, there's a huge battle underwater with CG creatures and it looks awesome. I was like, well, that's cool. So it's a whole roller coaster of. I don't remember it ever looking awesome, except some parts. I liked looked... the bit with where they were on shark motorcycles and it just looked cool. Like oh, I whole... thought it looked like shit. You didn't like the look oh, of God, Atlantis. No. I thought design. all of that was too busy, too much going on. I get it. You're underwater. It's a whole civilization. There's all kinds of like cool stuff. How about this? They went to a whole freaking place that's built out of um human yes ships that have crashed in the ocean right sunken ships and it looked like shit you couldn't see it it was too dark i was like this could be spectacular i don't like to compare things but like the big skull from guardians of the galaxy where they have that whole community inside of a skull yes yes right that <laughs> no was am- that's cool. that was amazing and i to them to this day that's one of my most favorite things about guardians of the galaxy is that image and that set and that idea right yep this could have been that i was like oh oh i thought okay we're gonna get some big lighting happening and then we're gonna like zoom in and see all these crashed ships from the last you know thousand years however long humans have been building but nope it was dull and gray and you couldn't see it yeah and it was just like this is where all the villainy the scum of the humans and the underwater world come and i was like oh this will be interesting and then it wasn't so I only have issues with this film, and I've just thought of another one. No oh God. Early on in the movie, they mentioned, oh, it's time for us to show ourselves to the humans because there's a whole, like, the pla- it's like Avatar. The planet is dying. Mm-hmm. They need the, the uh, sea people to help us. And they say in a little council, oh, we, it's about time we show ourselves. And I'm like, that is interesting. I want to see the aqua people, like, integrate with us and help us and and all that and then in the last minute and a half of the movie (laughs) they just throw all that into fruition like like that and then it's over i was like well that's the interesting story the aqua people coming to help us you should have done that at the beginning and that was the main plot of the movie not all this running around under the sea a guy who wants to avenge his father's death still boring (laughs) I mean, we just sound like broken records here. I get that. We're repeating and repeating, but that's what happens. Yeah. When you love movies and cinema and the experience of it so much, right? And stories. I like stories. I'm not a reader, but I like to absorb stories other ways, right? Yeah. Art, movies, television, visual stories, I guess. And then you come across something that has so much potential, right? And it's not like it's never been done before. It's not like someone hasn't taken a fantastical world 
underwater or in space or whatever you're going to do with it or like Avatar and turn it into something spectacular, like to keep your eyes occupied and tell you a grand tale that could have happened in this amazing place. You hear the hope in my voice? And yes. then it's not that. Now, it is not. You could turn around on me and say, oh, Sid Talk, in the past, you've said, if you want to make a better movie, do it yourself. That's fair. I mean, I'm not going to, but you're right. <laughs> I'm not going to go <laughs> make a movie. I'm just going to complain about James Wan's version. So that's yeah. where we're at. <laughs> I keep getting the Jameses mixed up. You do. James Wan, James Gunn. James Wan, James Gunn. James Gunn is the new leader of DC. James Wan is the director of The Conjuring and Aquaman. And in that world, The Conjuring and whatnot, excellent, right? Yes. I mean, you are in love with The Conjuring. I literally, if it was my world to rule, <laughs> I would take James Wan away from superhero movies and put him back into horror movies because I really like his horror movies. Malignant, that was awesome. Make horror movies, James. Well, Malignant was... Yeah, oh. it was just like um, oh. a surprise out of nowhere. You're like, what the hell is this? Unsettling. <laughs> So if you so, take that kind of interesting take on things and then erase it yeah. with this. It's this sad. just is like vanilla ice cream. Maybe he got stuck with, you know, a pre-existing something or other and he just did the best he could. Let's just go there. <laughs> well, what I was reading is this movie had a lot of reshoots, etc. Hmm. It was in trouble at one point. It almost got cancelled completely, like chopped off, and they weren't going to do this one, hmm. even though it was halfway filmed. So, yes, I don't know if it's because of that, but you can tell it has issues when you're watching it. I feel like people like the main cast were just really into it, like, screw it. We, they probably knew all the story and what was going to go down and how James yeah. Gunn was taken out, I assume, right? Yeah, I'm sure, yeah. And they did put their themselves into it, like... All of them, even Nicole Kidman. I mean, her part's a little bit out there for, she's a little more serious. She's their mom. So she's not like, you know, in the big action too much. But I feel like, Mom, I always want to call him Mimosa. I know that's not his name. Jason Mimosa. Jason Mo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'm not the first one to call him that. He was totally into it, you know, like just fuck it, like have a good time. I feel like everybody was pretty much. Yes. Let's get on to the cast anyway. J Jason Mimosa. <laughs> plays Arthur slash Aquaman. He just does exactly what Aquaman is. Mm -hmm. And I think that's fine because that's all, that's what it is. Yeah. Right? It's a bit too cheeky for me. A I would have a cheeky. more serious version of him to be fair. Yeah. But. I mean, he is, you could say guardians of the galaxy guy goes that wackiness as well. But you know, for this, it just seemed, you know, the bit at the beginning where he was kind of complaining about being the king and how boring it was. And mm -hmm. it, it was it was just like, this is really cheesy and doesn't seem right. Patrick Wilson plays his brother, Orm. You didn't realize he had a brother, but yes, he does. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> All I think of him from Patrick Wilson is from Fargo. <laughs> I think of him from uh, Watchmen. Okay. I only yeah. think Fargo. Because right. he was, that was a really good season of Fargo. It was. Um, Patrick Wilson, I thought he was fair, fair here. It was a stupid, like, bromance thing that they were going for. I mean, they're brothers. It was so, like, oh, I hate you, I love you, I hate you, I yeah, love you. Yeah, we had to somehow bring the brother back into the fold, which it clearly in the other one, he was the bad guy, he blah, 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 and got defeated, and wow, wow. Yeah. <laughs> What's, wow, wow, wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> talking about bad guys, Yaha Abdul Mateen II, and talking of Watchmen, he was in the TV series of Watchmen. Mm -hmm. He plays Black Manta. I wasn't even, I didn't even know that was his name until nobody ever said it in this movie. They didn't go, oh, look, it's Black Manta, did they? They said Manta, but yeah. that's about it. And I thought it was Praying Mantis, but. You and know. I thought it was Black Mamba. But he, that's from Kill Bill, I think. You couldn't, he wasn't a snake. No. He was a bug. He was. And I hated his outfit. <laughs> <laughs> I hated all of it. <laughs> he was okay, I guess. He was trying to be intense, but then it came across goofy because of the rest of the movie. Yes, and because it wasn't appropriate. Right. I mean, it just wasn't, sadly. Amber Heard plays Mera. She was a big part of the first movie, but not much in this. She's super, a, super boring. Yeah. They just didn't give her much, and I... We're not even going to discuss why, but, I mean, the possibilities are there. 
Nicole Kidman as Atlanta, you just mentioned her. She's the mother. And she is almost in a different movie. She's in a serious movie. She's a very serious movie. <laughs> <laughs> There's no one-liners from her. No. No. And Dolph Lundgren, who is also in a kind of a serious movie, as King Nerys. Yeah, I'd say that Nicole and Dolph are playing their 1987 versions. Yes. Of what these get these mom and dad version are supposed to be. I don't even know. No. But still, they were into it, so I can't fault them. <laughs> no, I kind of like them too, and I like seeing Dolph Lundgren. He's awesome. He's got a limp. I'm all I'm down for the limp these he days. He really has. He's got a bad knee, so I'm I'm like, oh man, I feel for you. <laughs> yeah. IMDb reviews. What are those? Those are reviews on IMDb where people are going to probably say a lot of the things we've just said in their little one star reviews. And now I can never make fun of them again because, well, now I'm being one of them. All right. So the first guy says, wow, this is completely awful. <laughs> this movie feels like the equivalent of Eminem's revival because the movie is a dumpster fire in the worst way with poor writing and sloppy acting. The first Aquaman movie was very enjoyable, but this one sucks. <laughs> so that's the first guy. Okay. Second guy says, this is a garbage movie that we should throw into the ocean. In a year filled with terrible movies and Barbie, the worst movie ever, leading at the box office, it sometimes feels fitting that the ending of the first DCU would end with this garbage. <laughs> How do you bring Barbie into it? Come on, man. The uh, third guy says, this movie was mental torture. <laughs> the movie has no story, and it's a perfect example when someone creates a film solely for the purpose of making money from the franchise. I really hope this is the end of this series. We don't need to pay to see films like this. DC has ruined its reputation with this release. Hmm. But what did I say? I said... And I'm not the and like I said, like I said, this movie has no purpose other than if you just loved it and it entertained you that I guess. I mean, that's the purpose of a lot of movies. But in the whole of this big story, because they're never going to revisit this cast or this telling of the DC world ever again. Right. It had so much possibility of first of all, it could have been wacky as hell and it wouldn't have mattered, but they didn't go there. Could have been really dark and serious and gritty. I mean, almost killing a baby for its blood. <laughs> that was part of it, right? That's real dark shit. That happened, yes. But then just to have, well, it didn't happen, but just to have, you know, stay away from my baby is like, and ugh, that was, you know, it wasn't enough. So yeah, I just felt like this movie doesn't have a place. And that's really sad and arrogant of me to say. And when I look at my like entire collection of, um, DC Blu-rays on the shelf and I see Man of Steel at one end and this at the other end. It feels like how far they have fallen, kind of. Oh. So, you know, I'll go back and watch them all again at some point. But I'm not looking forward to this one again. Let me say that. So extras and conclusion. There are some extras. We watched the streaming version. But the conclusion is I'm going to give, unfortunately, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom a 5 out of 10. Mm, I'm going to give it a 4.7. All right. I was being a bit generous. You were. Yeah. Now James Gunn is going to take over the DC universe and we're going to get a whole new start from the beginning, like scratch all this off. Start. That doesn't mean it'll be good. It doesn't mean it'll be good. No, it's a big question mark at the moment, mm -hmm. isn't it? So we'll see. So thank you to Warner Brothers. Next week, we're going to be looking at the movie Roadhouse. Have you heard of this movie? I've never even seen the original, so. Well, that'll be great for you to compare it to the original <laughs> when you don't even know the original. Anyway, we'll see Roadhouse with Mr. Jake Gyllenhaal. Movie recommendations. I'm going on the theme of this. I was thinking of like movies that are kind of empty calories a little bit, but they have people from this movie in them. And the first one is Fast X. You know what? Jason Mimosa, he was a really good Baddie in Fast X, do you mm -hmm. remember? Like a real insane mustache twirling baddie. Very insane, yes. Yeah, I liked how insane he was in that, and I thought that was really fun. And that movie knew it was fun and stupid and didn't try and be serious. <laughs> and the other one's a movie with Patrick Wilson, the original The Conjuring. I think it's a really good movie. It's just a popcorn movie, really, though, isn't it? Absolutely. It's a, there's a lot of, like, um, 
jump scares. But I think it's a good franchise, and I wish James Wan would go back to horror. Thank you. <laughs> Thank y'all. And my recommendations are going back to the 20th century from 1900 to 1999 in the action slash adventure department. This isn't a quality control situation. This is just the movies I've seen. Popeye with Ooh. Robin Williams. Scooby-Doo. I don't know which one. The Princess Bride. There you go. Now, there's one I would recommend. <laughs> He's only mostly dead. You know, I like that one. Yeah. Elf. Another sweet Can I movie. just say something about this interesting list of movies you've compiled? Uh -huh. It seems like one from a previous week. And it might have been like two weeks ago. Because I remember you talking about Popeye. Did I? Yes. I remember Herbie Fully Loaded, maybe. Or I do Herbie, remember No, that. Herbie Goes Bananas. Right. You mentioned Popeye, and I, it popped into my head. Popped. Well, then we need someone to tell us, because I'm not looking. So Elf right. is another cute one. Very sweet. Heart, a lot of heart. And Herbie Fully Loaded. That's a nice variety there for you. Yeah. I think that those are great movies, even if it's the second time you've mentioned Popeye? It. Yeah. You think Popeye was great? No. Um, Even at the time when I was just easily moldable by any movie, because I would watch seven, eight, ten movies in a row. It was very bizarre, actually. I probably should watch it again. It's very weird. Kind of surreal in parts. Okay, I've made the effort. I've looked back over the last whole year, and I have not mentioned Popeye. Well, maybe I somebody else mentioned Popeye. <laughs> do you do another podcast on the side? Are you cheating maybe. on me in the podcast world? After the show, too, over there. <laughs> As long as it's number two and this is number one, we're fine. All right. So <laughs> a, a scully stuff this week. I've been playing a new horror game called Alone in the Dark 2024. Now, the reason it has the 2024 on the end is this is a long-running series from back in the day. It was an old PC game. Now, this is a almost a remake of the original game. And the original game, if you go back and play it now, it is... The graphics are so bad, you can barely tell what's going on. It's that era of games, do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So what they did was remade that game, but in slightly changed it and made it modern. And it stars David Arbor, you know that guy? Mm. From Stranger Things, Hopper. Okay. And Jodie Comer, you know Jodie Comer? She's from Killing Eve, is that right? I don't know. Well, two big Hollywood actors they've got to make this, and it's... Similar to a Resident Evil game, you, you go to this house, something's up, turns out it's monsters and ghosts, okay. and it's a survival situation. You've got X amount of ammo, and you've got to solve a lot of puzzles in the vein of Resident Evil. Now, having these two A-list actors in it makes the voice acting like 10 times better than usual, because there's a lot of games that have like very poor voice acting. These two know what they're doing. And when I was reading with David Arbor, you know, like he was in the Gran Turismo movie, he's really into gaming, that guy. He's hmm. like a gamer guy. So he seeks out gaming projects, and this was one that he was really into. I found it really fun so far. It's got those kind of puzzles that are really cool, like in Resident Evil, like find three coins and put them in a fountain, and then the fountain goes down and there's an underground lair underneath it, that kind of thing. Right, yeah, you do love that. Yeah. So, Alone in the Dark 2024, it's out now on PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and maybe on the Switch. I'm not sure. I don't have a Switch. Sid Talk, what's for dinner? Tonight will be up to you, because you're making one of our boxed I am. A, um, something. Green Chef? Home Chef? Something Chef. <laughs> a Scully Chef. And it's going to be tacos. Soft tacos with a black bean filling. Because we're vegetarian, and we've been vegetarian for a very long time. It's been 15 years. I don't know why anyone still gets all grizzly about it. Like, oh, you know. But we just tell you what we eat because we're not starving. I can assure you, I am not starving. Carbohydrates are my in my DNA. So we have to connect with lots of carbohydrates every day. This is one of those examples of, like, last night. Oh, my God. It was like hummus that you made homemade from one of these meal boxes. Oh, yeah. On a flatbread, like a naan bread, with a little bit of salad and uh, feta cheese and tzatziki sauce. Oh, my God. It was, it was so very good. good. I would now give it a 10 like, out of 10. Now it's it's only 3.33, and I'm like, <laughs> can we just stop and go eat supper? <laughs> no. So I'm excited about that. I like food anyway, but I love that you make it and that you're good at it. 
And then uh, my advice. Um, yeah, uh, said so. What's your advice? My advice isn't <laughs> advice, <laughs> as always. And I've said it before. I just don't know if I use the exact same words. Learning a new way, a new thing, doesn't erase the old way. Yes. You know? So if I learn a new way to, uh, so I do gardening stuff, right? And if I've always done this, 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 and it, I grew this tomato, and then I, I see somebody else do it a different way, I don't reject that new way. Like, ah, but if I try a new way, my brain will be infiltrated by new information and I'll lose my past. I'll no longer have that information stored in my head. It's not an in and out situation, people. Right? It's not like pluck out some information that you have and plug in some new stuff because there's not room for all of it. I could learn every single method that's ever been devised by humankind to grow a tomato. I probably don't have time or the energy, but I could because I have space in my brain. And then if I pick one that I really, really like and that works for me and I enjoy, that doesn't erase all the others. I still know it. And it, this can apply to anything. How you think about the world, how you approach situations, how you communicate with people, how you perceive a certain, any aspect of humankind at all. So go really, go all the way from growing a tomato to the deepest thing you can imagine, like understanding human behavior. That just because you've always been taught a way, and this is how they are, and this is how they should be, and this is how we should act, and this is how we should, whatever, and then someone's introducing something different. It doesn't erase you. Add it to what you know. You will be shocked and amazed and how it will transform your life. Is that it? Thank you. That is it. Oh, uh, I took uh, a lot of air. I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired. I wore myself out. The advice just ruins you. <laughs> Aschoolie.com is the place you can go to get this podcast. You can also go to uh, Twitter and Facebook there and Instagram. There are social media networks that we are on. I'm A. Scully, your Sid Talk. You can also go to Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, and YouTube for this podcast. Email feedback to me, ascully at ascully.com. Do not email Sid Talk. She doesn't want your email. And stay classy, the DCEU2? Question, Question mark? mark? <laughs> and I'm going to say, think for yourselves or someone will do it for you. <laughs> <laughs>